Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought we would do a video covering a bunch of different stuff that has come out in War Thunder the last few days. The first one is some discounted premiums that have come back. We have the VG Anta and also the MiG-21 Bison. Both of these are on a discount for Indian Armed Forces Flag Day. Uh, so, basically, after India gained independence, the government had problems funding the country's armed forces. On the 7th of December 1949, Flag Day was first celebrated. Small flags were distributed to the population in exchange for donations. The holiday has been held annually since then, and on this day, the armed forces parade, veterans are honoured, and also funds are raised to support the military. Now, the VG Anta is coming back for Golden Eagles. It's going to be here until the 9th of December at a 30% discount. And then also the Bison Pack, the MiG-21 Bison. If you want to pick it up, it is actually quite heavily discounted as well. Uh, so if you want to buy the MiG-21 Bison Pack, make sure to use my partner link uh, to get access uh, to it. And also support the channel, get the decal, discounts and all that good stuff. And let's get into some vehicle reviews. If you enjoy the channel, make sure to subscribe. Let's go. So the first vehicle on offer is the VJ Anta. Now this is a Vickers vehicle. It's very similar to the other Vickers vehicles that we have in the tech tree, specifically uh, stuff like the Mark I and also the Mark III. Now the VG Anta has the really good reload, which is what these Vickers are known for. It also has the good mobility, since it has the pretty nice engine and also transmission combo, and of course the stabilizer for the L7 gun, which makes it very good at 8.3. The only area that the VG Anta doesn't excel at is the armament compared to others in terms of rounds. So it's in that kind of weird uh, state where if you get a look at like 8.7s and 9.0s, they start getting APFSDS, whereas with this vehicle, it's still stuck with APDS and also heat FS. So if you face stuff with chemical protection like T55 AM1s, it can be a little bit annoying to deal with, but you usually have a better targeting speed and also the APDS can still go through them. The question is how much post-pen damage do you do uh, with the gun that's always been the issue uh, the gun depression is good on it though since it's quite a low setting vehicle you also have smoke grenades to be able to survive too and as i said the targeting speed is really good on this so you're always able to get the first shot off it also has a bunch of different machine guns two 762s and a 12.7 which one of these is a ranging gun for the hash uh, don't use the hash, it's worthless. Uh, stick to APDS and heat FS and kind of switch uh, between them depending on what target you're facing. And you can also run it with the Vickers Mark III, you can run it with the Warrior and the ZT3A2, which got a large buff after the last update. You also have the Tsar and then also the Marksman and even the Roy Cat, or sorry, the Oliphants that you can add in too. This lineup is really nice for ground and you also have some good air on top of it. And that means that you can do really well with the VG Anta and hammer down the enemy forces. The Bison is also on offer. I would say this is probably a little bit uh, worse to take than the VG Anta, basically because it's quite limited in armament compared to a lot of other uh, fighters that you will fight with. Uh, but at the same time, it's now out of the top tier matchmaking, so it should be a little bit easier to use on that front. The VG Anta only has access uh, to four missiles in total. Basically, you have two R27R1s, which are very good semi-active radar homing missiles at the BR. It also has the R73Es, which are the IRCCM, uh, all aspect uh, kind of uh, missiles from the Soviets, which is good. And then also you have quite a few ground ordnance too, like the, the CAB 500 KRs, which are really nice to see. And also uh, you have access to stuff such as the big old S24 rockets that you can use to overpressure stuff as well. But the main reason you use this thing is an air superiority fighter. So running these uh, together with each other using the countermeasures and also the very good radar uh, on this thing together to be able uh, to use, you know, the missiles is a very very nice setup the problem as i said i have is i feel like as a premium you don't really want to pick a vehicle that doesn't have a ton of armament and also has quite an old platform because what will end up happening is you'll use all your ordnance and you won't really know what to do from that i feel like there are better options maybe not for the british tree but for others to kind of pick up for me i would just grind through the british tree there's a lot of very good jets which are underappreciated there 
and uh, the bison, even though it's good at what it does in terms of its avionics and in terms of its missiles being very powerful, there are better options which are just easier to play through. You do also have a prototype camouflage, which does look really nice though, so maybe you want to pick it up for the drip. There was also a bit of news that we covered in a data mine, but it is now official, which is the War Thunder anti-cheat system update. War Thunder is going to be using Battle Eye instead of uh, the previous uh, one that it's been using, Easy Anti-Cheat. And the real question is, what is the difference between them? And as I found a lot uh, across the board, there's a lot of conflicting information about which one is better. For me, I just don't like kernel level anti-cheat. I don't trust these companies with my data, especially with many of these uh, kind of digital aspects or digital companies getting a bunch of, uh, well, privacy issues, let's say, in the past where a lot of stuff has been leaked. I find it very intrusive and I also don't really feel like it's something uh, that really has proven to work more effectively than other things. So yeah, it's just another one of those levels of kind of security uh, which I feel like is over the line in terms of what is going on, but c'est la vie. It's the standard now and people are fine with it, which kind of sucks. So they talk about the advantages of Battle Eye anti-cheats. They also talk about the replacement process, uh, which will be done in waves. Uh, so therefore it won't be all done at once. And then they have a little bit of an FAQ about it. Will sound modifications work? The answer is yes, they will. Remember, sound modifications are only banned in competitive play in War Thunder. They're not banned in standard play. So if you want to use sound mods, you can do. Just remember to turn them off or move them around when you are playing competitively. The other part is, will battle eye anti-cheat affect performance? And it says the new anti-cheat should, should not affect FPS in the game. I like that. I like putting should instead of will not. Uh, because it will, um, any process that is happening on the back end will affect how your uh, game runs. Because that's just how, you know, <laughs> this works. Processing power is taken away from the system to add somewhere else. Since Battle Eye will only work with the War Thunder client running, it will not affect the performance of your system in other tasks. Which was, of course, not really what people were after. They're asking, will it affect the performance in the game? And the answer, unfortunately, is inconclusive. Because it can only be inconclusive. Because if anybody actually experiences performance drops, they would have to end up, uh, you know, in some kind of fun legal proceedings. So, uh, the Battle Eye stuff... We'll see how it goes. As I said, reading a bunch about Battle Eye and also using anti-cheats and a bunch of other anti-cheats, there's just a massive amount of opinions around the place about what is good, what is bad, and everybody seems to have different experiences with it. It's pretty much impossible for me to work out what is good and what is bad, and also how many people had just seen the logo and see a game and then get told there's a bunch of cheaters in it, therefore it does not work, yada yada yada, all that wonderful stuff. There was also a big old changelog that came out yesterday, update 2.41.0.55, and uh, there seems to just be a bunch of stuff going on with it. Obviously, once again, the data mine came out um, previously, so we covered some of them. For example, the F-15 and the F-15i RAM uh, changes to the secondary loadouts, they've moved them around. So if you want to have a look at that, make sure to check out the changelog. There's a lot of changes with it, so... Um, if you enjoy those vehicles, then that's where to have a look. There was also a bug that caused aircraft to jump and crash when landing on new airfields without landing gear, and that has been fixed, so they would bouncy, bouncy, bang, bang. I wish we could promote people landing on landing gear again, um, just because of the fact I think it's much cooler and also just nicer. I don't like seeing people bang into the ground over and over again. Uh, it's uh, kind of sad to see. The Tornado GR4, the display of the AIM-9 indication on the hood has been fixed, so you'll be able to see uh, where the AIM-9 is, which is quite nice. And then also the SU-34, the launch sequence of the KH-38 missile has been fixed, so you'll be able to donk people in good fashion. The F-104G, uh, which is the Chinese um, F-104G specifically, the PSO-3 radar has been replaced by the NASAR, uh, so we'll have to see how that goes. And there was also a bug in Assault Air Arcade mode that caused AI aircraft to spawn inside each other. 
causing their collision and destruction, which has been fixed. This is actually one of those which would happen quite a lot in custom uh, missions, where if you spawn, like, let's say, 30 enemies, they would all spawn right next to each other, and then, boom, just start crashing into each other. Don't know if they ever actually fixed that, but I'm guessing they did. I'm not entirely sure. For the interface side of things, uh, there is a bunch of bugs that were fixed for the interface. So there's a bug where a squadron's main page did not display all the selected squadron vehicle rewards that's been fixed. There was also one where players who left the squadron could still have a squadron tag. <laughs> so they fixed that. There was also one that caused prompts about leaving the vehicle and about the start of an air event to not show in VR mode. So that's been fixed. Uh, also, there was no hint about leaving the battle zone in simulator battle. There was changing the nickname display setting in the hangar. This didn't immediately update the player's nickname in the player card. There was also a bug where air simulator battle rooms had the letter res in their name. That's been fixed. And also with a profile window opening the service record tab without opening the statistics tab reset the selected mode. There was also indications in the names of the sub-chapters in the Achievements tab of a player profile had been made bigger, so it's easier to distinguish them from the names of the chapters. There was also a bug where the favorite mode stat blocks were different widths in the player card window. That's been fixed too. Order separators have been added to the player card window for the favorite mode stats, and the number of complaints filed by one player in a single battle against the same player is now limited. This is done to limit spamming of complaints from one player to another. During a single battle, a player can still file complaints on multiple players, and multiple players can still file complaints on the same player. So basically, you can't spam report people anymore, which I'm kind of surprised wasn't fixed a long time ago. Um, that is surprising. Then, uh, for sounds, the Aiden and Defer and T-160 aircraft cannons have received sounds more typical of this cannon's caliber, uh, that's weird, since they changed, or at least the Aiden and the, the Defa, they updated them in the last update, so I'm guessing they didn't like it as much. And also, the enemy ally gun sounds are now better heard through a closed aircraft canopy at low frequencies, if the gunfire is close to the listener's aircraft, so you'll be able to get more immersed in the simulator battle. That's the change log from yesterday, and all the news the last few days, as always. Look after yourselves, peace be with you, I'll see you soon. I'd just like to thank GMG Smiley, CD Beans, Chieftain Mike, EMN3 Galaxy, Tulio Ponticovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Ozzy Panzer, Alan Hacker, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Sem Aslan, Uncle Bean and Derek R. for supporting the channel.